All news. All for Texas. This is Texas News Radio. I'm Dennis Foley. Coming up, San Antonio is moving forward with a required paid sick leave ordinance. The president is calling on more countries to investigate Joe Biden and his family. Mattress Matt places a big bet on the Houston Astros. I'm ABC's Jim Ryan in Texas. The story is coming up. Trying to conceive? Men, listen up. You should not be drinking. I'm Matt Piper. This is Texas News Radio from 550 KTSA and FM 1071. The San Antonio City Council has approved a revised paid sick leave ordinance in hopes that it can withstand legal challenges. It's now called the Safe and Sick Time Ordinance, partly because it allows workers to use paid sick leave when they're victims of domestic abuse or sexual assault and need to relocate. The amended ordinance, which is scheduled to go into effect in December, will require all companies, no matter the size, to provide 56 hours of earned paid sick time to employees. It passed today with an 8-3 to three vote. Councilman Members Clayton Perry, Rebecca Villagran, and Manny Pelias voted against it. Elizabeth Ruiz, KTSA News. Images of a handcuffed man led by officers on horseback caused a national outcry this past summer in Galveston. For the first time, we're hearing audio from the officer's body cam. The image of the controversial August arrest sparking outrage and charges of racism. Instead of sending for a police car, the officers walked Neely to the station. One officer can be heard acknowledging how it looked. This guy looks so bad. Neely, a mentally ill man who was once homeless, was arrested for criminal trespass. Stay right there. The officers were cleared of wrongdoing, and Galveston police say the practice of using rope has been discontinued. Janet Shamley on CBS News, Houston. But O'Rourke is taking Pete Buttigieg to task on gun buyback programs. O'Rourke says Buttigieg is too worried about the polls and spends too much time listening to consultants. Who, who I think probably wants to get to the right place but is afraid of doing the right thing right now. O'Rourke, who supports a mandatory gun buyback program, made those comments at a gun policy forum in Las Vegas. Buttigieg says such a policy has mixed results and likened it to a shiny object that makes it harder to pass other gun control policies now. A former Iraqi interpreter for U.S. military forces gets a 30-year sentence for selling fake opioids laced with deadly fentanyl. U.S. Attorney John Bash says he made a profit, or the man made a profit of more than $14 million from the sale of fentanyl-laced opioids on the dark net. Instead of taking advantage of the opportunities we have in this country for immigrants, he decided to make money by dealing literal poison to U.S. citizens and to others. One of those killed, one of those pills killed a U.S. Marine in Camp Lejeune. After serving 30 years in federal prison, this man will be sent back to Iraq. KTSA AccuWeather. Hardly cloudy tonight, low 67 in the hill country and 72 along the Riverwalk. Sunshine and a few clouds tomorrow, very warm, high 92. Mostly clear tomorrow night, low 65 in outlying areas, 69 in the city. For Saturday, sunshine and patchy clouds, and turning hot with a high of 94. The record is 95. Partly cloudy tonight, low 67 in outlying areas and 72 in the city. This is meteorologist Bob Larson with their KTSA Stephen Trufik. Thank you with a forecast. CBS Eye on Veterans from ConnectingVets.com. Large corporations and small businesses alike can both find tons of information about hiring military veterans thanks to the new Guide to Hiring American Veterans. Jeff Hall from Disabled American Veterans told us more about what we can find in this incredible new resource. We decided we needed to put out a guide, a practical solutions-based guide with some answers to some common barriers or challenges companies are, were, and some still having when it comes to hiring and retaining veterans with disabilities. You can find the guide on the Disabled American Veterans website. Jobs.dav.org. I'm Phil Briggs from ConnectingVets.com for CBS News. It was a stunning moment in the courtroom yesterday as a former Dallas police officer was sentenced to 10 years in prison for killing her neighbor, but not everyone reacted the same way. Amber Geiger said shooting Botham Jean was a tragic mistake. Moments before she was sentenced, the victim's brother, Brant, addressed her in court saying he forgave her and asking the judge, who is black, Can, Can I give her a hug, please? They hugged, she sobbed, the judge could be seen on video wiping away a tear, and moments later the judge hugged Amber Geiger. Critics objected, saying it was inappropriate since the judge oversaw the trial. And later that night, no justice, no peace. dozens no took to the streets protesting the 10-year sentence, which they said was too lenient. 
I'm Rita Foley. Meanwhile, a new AP NORC Center poll finds that a majority of Americans think whites are treated more fairly than blacks by police. Activists of color cheered the guilty verdict against Geiger, a white former Dallas police officer who killed her black neighbor, Botham Jean, in his own apartment. Some saw it as evidence of progress in a nation where there's been a plethora of fatal police shootings of unarmed African-American men. The poll finds that 7 in 10 blacks and about half of Hispanics call police violence against the public very serious, as do about a quarter of whites. But the poll also found many think police in most areas are more likely to use deadly force against a black person than a white person. Allison Keyes, CBS News. This week marks two years since the Las Vegas shooting at a country music festival, and today a deal to settle claims against the Las Vegas casino and hotel giants. It's a massive amount of money. MGM Resorts announcing it will pay out up to $800 million to settle hundreds of lawsuits involved Involving thousands of victims of the Las Vegas shooting. The exact amount of money will depend on how many victims and families take part. MGM owns Mandalay Bay, where gunman Stephen Paddock stockpiled weapons and fired from a window. MGM also owns the venue where the victims were shot. Alex Stone, EBC News. The Department of Homeland Security is cracking down on faux families that are showing up at the southern border. New guidelines were issued in April that make it quicker and easier to determine if children presented as family are actually being trafficked. The process includes the possibility of a DNA test that can tell within 90 minutes whether a child is really related to a person claiming to be a family member. A Homeland Security spokesman says agents have identified 5,000 faux families so far this year. This is Texas News Radio. I'm James Pledger, and in the NFL, the Dallas Cowboys have some injury concerns along their offensive line. Pro Bowl left tackle Tyron Smith is dealing with a high ankle sprain suffered in their loss to the Saints and is unlikely to play this weekend against the Packers. And now, right tackle Lyle Collins is dealing with a back ailment that caused him to miss practice yesterday, and he's not expected to do much, if anything, today either. This according to head coach Jason Garrett. Connor Williams has moved over to right tackle to take Collins' reps with the first team, while Xavier Sulfilo has replaced Williams at the left guard spot. In other Cowboy news, Dallas signed ex-Packers safety Josh Jones to their practice squad. Jones is a former second-round pick of the Green Bay Packers from 2017. Dallas lost Kayvon Frazier to the injured reserve for the season after he underwent surgery on a torn pec suffered in the loss to the Saints as well. This creates a vacancy on the 53-man roster, to which they've promoted ex-Bengals wide receiver Ventrell Bryant from their practice squad. In college football news, after entering the NCAA transfer portal last month, Texas linebacker Caleb Johnson is committed to the UCLA Bruins. Johnson was a 2019 recruit for the Horns, who was the number three overall Juco outside linebacker. In Major League Baseball, the Astros will be facing the Rays in the ALDS after Tampa beat Oakland 5-1 in the wildcard game last night. The Astros are expected to have shortstop Carlos Correa back for the ALDS after missing the last series of the regular season with a sore back, an injury that also caused him to miss a month of the season earlier this year. Finally, the Texas High School Coaches Association will hold its annual summer convention, known as the Coaching School, in San Antonio at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. It will be held July 18th through the 21st in 2020, and it will also host the conventions in 2024 and 2025. I'm James Pledger for ESPN San Antonio. Overseas, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has set out a new Brexit plan to EU leaders, but he faces strong headwinds in Brussels and from his own lawmakers. Prime Minister. That croaking sound, an ailing House Speaker inviting Boris Johnson to set out his wares before skeptical British lawmakers. We have made a genuine attempt to bridge the chasm, to reconcile the apparently irreconcilable, and to go the extra mile as time runs short. The opposition pointing out... What we have before us is a rehashed version of previously rejected proposals. But with only two weeks before a crucial EU summit, less than four weeks before Brexit, EU leaders say they are prepared to take a look. Vicki Barker, CBS News, London. Pope Francis and U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo agreed today on the need to protect the rights of Christian minorities in the Middle East. Pope Francis and the U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo met privately for approximately half an hour at the Vatican this morning. They agreed on the need to protect the rights of Christian minorities in the Middle East. State Department spokesman Morgan Ortegas also said they reaffirmed the United States and Holy See commitment to advancing religious freedom around the world. Pompeo then traveled to his ancestral home 
in the Abruzzo region. Sabina Castelfranco, CBS News. Rome. A union for Texas troopers is suing the state over a new policy that limits the size of officers' waistlines. San Antonio Express News says the Department of Public Safety now requires male officers' waistlines to be slimmer than 40 inches. Women's waistlines must measure 35 inches or less. While troopers have always been subject to fitness standards, the president of the Texas Department of Public Safety officers calls the new requirements demeaning. The lawsuit alleges the new policy violates state law because it's not directly related to the trooper's job duties or not uh, developed with the aid of a consultant. The union is asking a judge to put a waistline standards on hold while the case moves forward. There's a new Halloween costume to scare parents into doing the right thing. From the company that brought us the sexy Mr. Rogers costume comes the college admission scandal Halloween outfit. Yandy's tribute to the Felicity Huffman Lori Lachlan debacle features a prison orange crop top with the words Mom of the Year crossed out and Inmate printed underneath. The company's tweet, can't row your way out of this one. A dig at Lachlan, who's accused of paying half a million dollars to get her daughters classified as rowing recruits at USC. The get-up sells for 70 bucks. Deborah Rodriguez, CBS News. KTSA Money News. Stocks whipsawed between positive and negative territory several times before settling with a winning session, snapping an ugly two-day losing streak. Economic concerns remain front and center, with ISM services sector reading for September falling to its weakest level in three years. But the market was boosted by rising odds of a Fed rate cut at this month's meeting. The Dow gained 122 points to 26,201. The Nasdaq rose 87 points to 78.72. The S&P gained 23 points to 29.10. Initial jobless claims hit a one-month high on a gain of 4,000 to 219,000, fueled by the GM union strike. Jason Brooks, CBS News. The news never stops. This is Texas News Radio. President Donald Trump is calling for more investigations of his opponent, Joe Biden. They should investigate the Bidens. Speaking to White House reporters, President Trump doubled down on his call for Ukraine to investigate his political opponent, Joe Biden, and his family's business dealings there, adding... China should start an investigation into the Biden. In a new message to supporters, the Biden campaign says the president continues to abuse his power. Steve Dorsey, CBS News, Washington. Pentagon officials were questioned by reporters today about what they knew about the president's conversations with Ukraine and the delay of military assistance. A Pentagon spokesman says no Department of Defense officials were on the president's July 25th call. But the general counsel for the Pentagon has sent out a memo directing all senior officials to turn over any documents related to Ukrainian aid. This is being called a standard procedure to catalog and review these documents and conversations in case they're needed in the future. That CBS's Cami McCormick. The text dot has big plans to widen a stretch of Interstate 10 between San Antonio and Bernie. The plans for the new project to upgrade the freeway from Ralph Fair Road to State Highway 46. The freeway is to be widened from four to eight lanes, including two HOV lanes and two general lanes on each side of the road. A spokesperson says TxDOT is trying to stay ahead of development in the area. No start or finish date has been given since the funding has not yet been secured. The Houston Astros have marched into the postseason with high hopes of winning the World Series. One of the, one of the team's most ardent and high-profile fans is putting his money where his mouth is. Since the early 80s, he's been known as Mattress Mac, the guy with the goofy TV commercials. Gallery furniture will save you money but beyond that i have a lot of confidence in the houston astros like three and a half million dollars confident he went to a sports book in mississippi this week with a briefcase full of cash and a mountain of team spirit they got to win 11 more games to win it all so i'm very hopeful that the astros will win it all the payoff for mississippi's biggest sports bet ever would be about 11 million dollars jim ryan abc news this is texas news radio Dr. Oz's advice for stricken Bernie Sanders. I'm Deborah Norville with the Inside Edition Inside Report. Dr. Oz has important advice for presidential candidate Bernie Sanders, who just underwent emergency heart surgery. The most important thing for him to do is take a week off and then go play sports. Playing in a campaign is playing sports. Sanders' campaign canceled all upcoming events until further notice after the 78-year-old had two stents inserted in a blocked artery. He is in the top tier of Democratic candidates. So can Sanders return to the campaign trail? Having played basketball with Senator Sanders less than three weeks ago on this stage, <laughs> I'm not that concerned about him bouncing back. From the Inside Edition newsroom, I'm Deborah Norville. 
South Korean media reports suggest U.S. negotiations with North Korean representatives this weekend could take place in Stockholm, Sweden. This latest round of denuclearization talks will come days after the North tested a submarine-launched ballistic missile for the first time since 2016. I'm Alex Jensen in Seoul. North Korea state media has reported yesterday's test was successful and involved a new submarine-launched ballistic missile, which it said ushered in a new phase in containing the outside forces threat. Presuming that refers to the U.S. and South Korea mainly, the North seems to be sending a message ahead of planned talks with the U.S. this weekend that Pyongyang can potentially strike America from a submarine and it will retain those capabilities if negotiations go badly. President Donald Trump hits the road today, traveling to a critical campaign state. President Trump travels to Florida today to visit a retirement community there. He'll deliver remarks and sign an executive order related to Medicare. The president will also hold a photo op with supporters. The trip out of Washington comes a day after President Trump grew combative with reporters during two Q&A sessions here at the White House. The president slamming Democrats, the media, and the whistleblower, whose complaint is at the center of the impeachment inquiry. Karen Travers, ABC News, the White House. Senator San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg is opposing a proposed detention center for illegal immigrant children at an east side church. The plan is to place an immigration and customs enforcement facility at Second Baptist Church on East Commerce Street. Others in the community say it's a good idea to provide kids caught in transition with a place to stay. Nuremberg says the church has put in a request for rezoning, which will be necessary for it to house dozens of kids. ICE will pay the church for its space. The new Joker movie opens starting today. For several months now, the FBI said it has received tips of online threats to venues showing the new Joker movie. None of them were deemed credible or specific, but a joint intelligence bulletin obtained by ABC News said the FBI remained concerned about the volume of threatening language. Some of the threats contain references to incel, the involuntary celibate community that has been linked to violence in the past. Other threats reference the 2012 mass shooting in Aurora, Colorado, during a showing of The Dark Knight Rises, though the bulletin said a connection has not been corroborated. Aaron Katursky, ABC News, New York. KTSA Entertainment. Will Smith says he was once wildly courageous to the level of foolishness. Now the 51-year-old actor tells E.T. he would now want to ask his younger self about the source of that courage. His new film, Gemini Man, hits theaters October 11th. Gwen Stefani has sold her 15,000 square foot Beverly Hills mansion for $21.6 million. That is 8.4 million more than she paid in 2006 with ex-husband Gavin Rosdale. Celebrating an E.T. birthday today, singer Gwen Stefani is 50, Oscar winner Alicia Vikander is 31, and which former member of Fleetwood Mac was a competitive swimmer before making it big? That would be guitarist Lindsey Buckingham, who today turns 70. This report brought to you by CBS Audio. For more entertainment news, sports, and lifestyle features, go to cbsaudio.com forward slash podcast and explore all that CBS Audio has to offer. From the Entertainment Tonight newsroom in Hollywood, I'm Kelty Knight. A French police union official says four police officers have died in a knife attack carried out by an administrator at the Paris police headquarters. Armed with a knife, the longtime police employee carried out the stabbings in a number of locations inside Paris police headquarters. He killed four people before he was shot dead. His motives are unknown. The attack comes a day after thousands of French police took to the streets of the capital to denounce difficult working conditions, unpaid overtime and high suicide rates. Elaine Cobb, CBS News, Paris. Pete Sessions is running for Congress again, this time in Waco. The longtime Republican announced today he wants to replace the retiring Bill Flores in the 17th Congressional District. Sessions was voted out of office last November from the 32nd District in Dallas and replaced by Democrat Congressman Colin Allred. He told the Dallas Morning News last week he was thinking about a rematch against Allred. If you want to be a star and you like to produce online videos, Visit San Antonio is probably looking for you. Richard Oliver says they want everyday people to tell their stories about what makes San Antonio great. The areas where there are some really historic, authentic, warm places that kind of speak to the heartbeat of San Antonio, and those are the people we're trying to find. The deadline to submit your video is October 17th, and we have a link on the San Antonio news page of KTSA.com. Fathers-to-be should not be drinking in the months leading up to conception. Men who are hoping to help conceive a baby should hold off on alcohol for the six months leading up to it. According to research just published in the European Journal of Preventative Cardiology, it's to protect against congenital heart defects for the baby. The study showed that if a man drank alcohol in the three months before conception, the odds of his child being born with a heart defect were 44% higher than if he had abstained from drinking. Congenital heart diseases are the most common birth defects, with a 
approximately 1.35 million babies affected every year. Matt Piper, CBS News. KTSA AccuWeather. Partly cloudy tonight. Humid with the low of 67 in outlying areas of 72 in the city. Sunshine and a few clouds tomorrow. High 92. Mainly clear tomorrow night. Low 65 in the Hill Country and 69 along the Riverwalk. Hot weather on Saturday. Sunday to partly cloudy. High 94. The record high is 95. Set back in 1937. To recount, partly cloudy tonight. Low 67 in the Hill Country and 72 along the Riverwalk. This is meteorologist Bob Larson with your KTSA Stephen Roofing AccuWeather forecast. Texas News Radio is a production of 550 KTSA and FM 1071. Get news anytime online and stay connected at KTSA.com.